Welcome back to Leveraging Leadership, where we unpack the art of business leadership. I'm your host, Emily Sander, Chief of Staff turned Executive Leadership Coach. I work with people to help them step into effective leadership and realize their professional and personal goals. If you have known failure and success, if you have had good bosses and bad bosses, if you are a high achiever and want new ideas, and if you want the practical and tactical side of things, then you are in the right place. This show is all about finding your points of greatest influence and leveraging them to better serve those around you. Welcome back. As chief of staff, how do you know if your team is gelling? If your executive team is coming together as a unit, if you're doing your job as chief of staff to be that connective tissue, to be that plastic thing on top of the six-pack cans of soda holding everything together, what are some ways you can tell if you're doing that? One of the ways is, does the team have each other's back? Do people on the executive team have each other's back? They're on the same team. They're all working together. Or is it me against you, my team versus your team? And this is mine and that's yours and you don't get mine because this belongs to me. Some tells for this would be resource sharing. So literally the easiest example is like people, right? So like these people are on my team and if I don't have all this, then my production goes down and my output goes down, da, 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 da. But as a leadership team, we're, we're a team too. So I have my functional group, but I also have my leadership team and I'm a member of two teams. And so in terms of the leadership team, an overall strategy of the business, an overall strategy of the leadership team, well, it makes sense to swing my people over here for a quarter. You need them, like we need them. And so when people volunteer that without having to be asked, that's when you know, oh, she has his back. She has his back. Okay, cool. That just happened. It could be with things like time off. These two executives are going to have to run hard for the six months. Everyone knows that. It's a high priority. Everyone sees that. And then it might be a discussion like, okay, in third quarter, let's slam through this initiative. If another executive, not the two that ran hard, if another executive goes, hold on, like I think, you know, Lauren and uh, Damien might be fried, like their teams might be fried. I don't know if we want to put that on them right away. That is a sign that the executive have each other's back because they're advocating for the others. Like, hey, hey, wait, wait. I know we all want that. And on paper, it looks good just to jam that in Q3. But like, I think our teams are going to be tired. I don't want them to burn out. They're not on my team per se, but they're on my greater team, the company team, the leadership team. And I want to make sure we're in a good spot. So I'm just going to call this out. Like, hey, is it worth it? Do we need to push? If we do, maybe we do. And that's a choice we all make. But do we have an opportunity to push that to Q4? Or maybe just give them a two or three week breather at least in between these projects, stuff like that. It could be things like PTO. So executives who, you know, we want to make sure all of us aren't out at the same time, obviously, but also, hey, I really care about this one vacation with my family, but I'm scared to leave this project in the middle. Well, hey, why don't I step in? So why don't I jump into your team meetings this week and next week? So I'm kind of ramped up and you can get me up to speed. And then I'll take point on those meetings in addition to my regular job. And then I'll debrief you when you get back. So I will be there in all those meetings. You don't have to worry. And then if something crazy happens, I will have the bat phone. I will have the red emergency phone and call you. But I've got this. So you don't have to worry about that. Those types of things where you just have each other's back and you're working together. And when you have a team to start to start making those signals and start making those moves, oh, you know that things are moving in the right direction. And you know that what you're doing as chief of staff is working. This doesn't happen overnight, especially if you have a team that's not used to working together or perhaps you have a lot of new people and there's just a culture that's been in a certain way for a long time and they're coming into that. But look for signs of these. Obviously, create an environment where people can have this type of conversation, interaction. Model that with the language you use so it's not like us versus them, but we or our And model that yourself if you can. It's a little bit different coming from chief of staff because they are more of a sweeper role over lots of different teams. But still, model that yourself or, hey, like, would it make sense for me to jump into that for a period of time and then hand that back off to you? Stuff like that. It would be talking about, complimenting, recognizing, rewarding people who do this. So let's say it is at the VP level or the senior manager level where, hey, I just wanted to mention that, you know, like Robert, Um, Melissa on your team, I heard them 
talking about this in the meeting last week, and she actually volunteered to help with that project for Romeo. And that worked really well. That got everyone on the same page and the teams were in a good spot. And that was just a really good example of people stepping up and having each other's back. I just wanted to call that out because I saw that and Melissa did an amazing job with that. That kind of stuff. And it can be as short as that. It can be shorter than that. It can be more in depth about why that was important. But all of those little things where that's what you're modeling, that's what you're exuding, and that's what you're talking about, and that's what gets attention are all things you can do as chief of staff to help your executive team gel and have each other's back. All right, so takeaways for you. First of all, on a scale of one to 10, where would you put your team right now? 10 is, oh my gosh, like we are one team. Everyone loves each other. We have each other's back. We're like family, like it's there, like no questions asked. One is like World War III is about to break out at any moment. Like this is a hostile situation and people are siloed and people are defensive and people are putting up fortress walls and shooting arrows over the top, all these things. So on a scale of one to 10, where is your team right now? Then what would it take if they're at like, say, a seven? What would it take to get them to an eight? And how would you know if it's a 10? What would indicate to you it's a 10? So making a little pathway to get yourself up on that scale. So you want to make sure that everyone is doing their best work. And one of the best indicators for that is, does the executive team have each other's back? And more to it, do their respective teams at different levels of the organization have each other's back at their level? Most of the time, it's going to be reflective of the leaders, but sometimes not. So start with the leadership team and then do check-ins on that type of stuff for the different parts of the organization. But we've all felt that, right? When like, dude, I'm safe. Like, I got this. I can take this jump. I can take this leap because even if I fall down, she's got my back. Even if I fall down and I make a fool of myself or even if that doesn't work and I make a mistake with the client, he's got my back. I know he does. I have no problem putting myself out there. So people will just act differently and rise to the occasion and stretch themselves and grow and be innovative when you have their back. And so if you can instill that at the leadership level, make sure that's happening in a robust way there, very likely that will cascade or that will ripple effect down to the rest of the organization. If you would like to have a chat about any of this, maybe how to get your team to gel a little bit more, maybe you're not in a bad spot, but can always get better. If you are, oh my goodness, I'm in like a two or three category here and I need to get myself at least to a five or six and wanna talk about some strategies for how to do that. Or if you're saying, you know, I've got six people on the leadership team, five of them are really good. And then I've got this person who just can't seem to get on board. How do I, how do I crack that nut? How do I get through to this person? We can have a talk about that. There's a link in the show notes for a free 30 minute clarity call. So that's there if you need it or want it. But I hope that your leadership team is gelling. I hope that everyone has each other's backs. I hope there's some great camaraderie and energy and just, this is my work family and I'm smiley and happy when I come to work. And there's no pretense or no walls built up. I hope that is the case for you. I hope that as chief of staff, your job is almost easy in this sense because you just have to keep things going in the direction they're going. You don't have to turn the Titanic. So I hope all of those things are happening for you. Go forth, be good chiefs of staff, be good leaders, and I will talk to you next week on Leveraging Leadership. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, share, and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. 